Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Martin Lind. I'm the developer of Water Valley, Pelican Farms, Pelican Hills, and Rain Dance. I'm really blessed to be in Windsor. I've been in Windsor my entire life. And there's an issue about the Rain Dance School that I want to set the record straight. And it's taken a lot of energy out of our community that should be going to good. And it's awful negative, and there's an awful lot of divisiveness. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop as much of that as I can with some factual information and some actually to scale examples of what's going on, how we got to the land issue, and then we'll go to the next issue. But I'm going to put the land issue to bed right now. In 2006, we were developing Water Valley South. The school district needed a 10 acre elementary site. It was right there. It was right on the edge of Eagle Park. We went on, 2008 happens, the crash hits. It ends up be growing up with a much older demographic, far less kids. 2013 comes along, and the wonderful superintendent we had at the time, Karen Trussler, and I were sitting talking about what do we do, how do we bus kids into here, and it made no sense to have an elementary school here where they were already in deed of the land. So we negotiated a deal to find a new place. I, got, I received this land back, and we were looking for land down here on south of Crossroads. We didn't really think there was going to be a lot of growth down here. So we're coming along. I did know we were going to do something here. I owned 160 acres right here called the Labu Farm. I did a transaction with RE4 in 2013 to trade 10 acres in Water Valley South for 10 acres right up here on Crossroads. But what I did do then in the trade for trade was I talked to the school and they said, you know, this might be a great area for more things, middle schools, maybe high school someday. So what I did was I added 40 more acres to that transaction. And all of this will be in a Dropbox for you to document. I traded 10 acres in Water Valley back, and I gave the school district, RE4, 50 acres. Deed for deed, no money traded hands. I love this district. I love this community. It was a good thing for us to do. What happened after that, a couple years later, school district said, you know what, we'd really like to have a little bit more land out here. So they bought some more land, and then the town came, and they wanted to buy 30 acres. So this ended up being kind of a park area along this side, and the school district owning this side. So everything on the Labu farm that I did own, I didn't own some in the corner, that wasn't used for a small corner for raw water and a small corner for storm water and a corner the school district did not want, we sold the rest of it to the town and the district. So now this entire property is basically government owned. That's what happened on that transaction. Fast forward into rain dance. We've now started rain dance. The school district needs a site. There's 10 acres. That's how the school district got the site. The key thing about this is just like the Water Valley 10 acres, I didn't stick it in the corner. I didn't put it out in no man's land. I gave it my very best site right next to a park. I did the same thing. My agreement with the school did not require me to put it here. That's the very best property in all of Rain Dance. I could have put it here, 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 here. We didn't. We put it here because it's in between two parks. It's on major regional trail master planning and it's a magnificent Long's Peak view. It should be the creme de la creme. It should be the very best school site RE4 ever got, and it should be built to those standards. Okay, now that we have a chronological accurate history of our rain dance, Water Valley, Labu, and the rain dance land, let's, talk, let's fast forward to today, or actually let's fast forward to about a year ago right now. We're talking about this site, we're pre-bond issue, we're the middle of the summer last year, and I ended up having an issue with the district that I loved, and I'm gonna tell you why. We were presented on September 3rd, drawings that were submitted to us on September 21st. That's the Rain Dance Elementary School. It's the first time I'd ever seen it. <clears throat> That's when I got those plans, and I instantly was taken back, because as you know, that you, those of you that live in Rain Dance, We've worked hard for an agrarian, uh, agricultural, historical preservation of our architecture, and we've worked hard, and we've honored that integrity of that architectural standard throughout 100% of the bridge, TEDS, the Rain Dance River Resort, and all that you guys have invested in. All of the architecture of your house is in the lab board siding. 
that's what we expected the standard to be. So you can imagine a little bit of my uh, dis disdain for this site plan. Now, if you live in inner city Commerce City next to a refinery, I think this would be great. But that does not at all honor what we're doing. And c bear in mind, I've been asking for this from the prior administration, and I got it one month before the bond issue. I was upset. I don't want that in our neighborhood. So this is where it started. And I wrote the district. And again, all of this is going to be on a Dropbox. But I wrote the district. And what we did was, when they submitted this on October 8th, we were deeding the land. I put a condition into it that they had to adhere to our architectural standards under our HOA. They wrote back, and they said they have no obligation to be part of an HOA. That's your HOA, not mine. That's your HOA. The district did not want to adhere to have to build to our standards. I'm not saying they would have or wouldn't have, but I, as a developer, wanted to protect your neighborhood and your property rights, so I pushed back. And here's the emails where I pushed back. And they, I was taken back that they wouldn't honor that deal in the deed transfer. So what I did, I put it in the deed, they rejected it. They said they will not accept that deed. I wrote them back and I said, we're not gonna tolerate this. We have expectations. We need to protect our development and the residents who have all invested in the actual and the same architecture standards and, added, and we've added that to the HOA. If the district will commit to the promised architectural standards expected, we have no promise, problem finalizing this transaction. And you can read the rest. But what happened was it turned in a beautiful 50-year relationship with the school district into a tumultuous, crazy thing. And they actually went to the town and they tried to shut off our building permits at Raindance because I wouldn't deed them the land unencumbered for an HOA. Well, they may have had the legal right to that, but think about it being a month before a bond issue, being that dismissive and that disrespectful to the 1,500 people that just invested in Raindance. And to be all honest, I'm kind of sold out of Raindance. So, I don't think this would have affected my sales. But you guys that live in Rain Dance and invested, I did not think that this was respectful to what you had invested in. So I pushed back hard. And that's why we pushed so hard on the school, was we wanted them to hold a standard that all of you did. So now let's fast forward to about a month ago. I sent an email saying, hey, we have tendered a deed. It's signed. We have given you the deed to the land without the HOA. You get it unencumbered because I want to take me, my family, and my company out of this school, charter school, public school. We want to take us out of it. So almost a month ago, we sent that. Here is the deed that I signed on the 6th of April. My signature, notarized 6th of April. We took it to the title company. It's been down there. 21st of April, we got a letter back saying the district won't accept the land because they think that the development agreement that I had for the land over there, they think that we needed to install the taps that were actually going to the specific site plan for the school. Well, I knew that agreement. I helped write that agreement. And I wrote them back and I said, that's not true. When you say that the agreement states the condition of the site prior to the district taking ownership, pay attention to that. I pushed this back out. In fact, I was even told it was spelled out in item 212B of the, of the agreement. That's not what the agreement says. I've highlighted below, I wrote them back, and I said, I take exception to this. You say prior to district taking ownership. That's a quote, that's not in the agreement. It's crystal clear in the agreement. It's a requirement prior to construction, big difference. The reason being is we never install utilities before we know where the driveways are or where the landscaper needs a water tap. So it's so out of, pro out of protocol to have been forced to not take a deed because of somebody's interpretation of an agreement and they're reading it wrong, we push back and lo and behold, this week we're notified that yes, indeed, our deed is okay and they will accept it and we need to go to the school board and they'll take the deed. Now that you have the chronology of the land, you have the chronology of the deed, what I'm gonna try to do is get me, my family and my companies out of the noise and all the innuendo and not be used as a pawn in some game that has no relevance to a good neighborhood. We've developed a magnificent place to live. And so what we need to do is focus on how to find the resolve to have the public happy and the charter happy because we need charter schools. 
We have a big bond issue coming up again next year. We have got to find a resolution to all of that capital expense. So as a person that's always looking for the answer, looking into the future, this is my suggestion. We had 10 acres. I say we leave that 10 acres for the public and we let a traditional bonded school elementary go right there. We focus on the Labou farm. Bear in mind the charter, which I'm not a part of, I'm not on their board, the charter offered $2.1 million to the district. When things got tough, they said, okay, we'll obey it. If they have $2.1 million, let's see if they will go over here to the Labou farm. This is a blow up of that. Here's Pelican Hills, Pelican Farms, and Rain Dance. The blue street sections are built 100% with all utilities, and there's a main sewer trunk line runs down crossroads. You take the same 10 acres, you give the charter. And when I say give, you give them 10 acres of opportunity here. You let them use their $2.1 million to help figure out how to get the roads in, because here's what that does. That improves all of this land for the school district. That makes this land that the school district has remaining crazy valuable. The town should be a partner in this progress because they have this park area. So you bring the town together, the school together, and the charter, and you use the $2 million, and you bring it, and you put the school right here. And here's why this is so important, because it's a win. Charter, parental choice, all of the alleviation of bond needs can happen here. Public can issue bonds, build traditional elementary right here. This particular site is connected by trail right between Water Valley and Rain Dance. Could be a magnificent place for charter and it would give expansion opportunity. If the charter was super successful, they could add. They could add middle, high school. They could, there's a lot of room over here because we need parental choice in our community. We need to stop the anxiety and the hate that's going on and we need to give parents choices. So in closing, this is one of the reasons I'm so frustrated. This is what the school district submitted to us a year ago in September. This is what the charter school submitted to us after only two weeks. Their architects came out, they looked at the DNA of the community, they looked at the DNA of a historical old school, and they put it together and that's what they brought us. They put it on a site plan that had as good a site plan for an elementary school as I've ever seen. And to say that it was not well received at the severance uh, board meeting is an understatement. I was actually stunned because they never even got to see any of this because they were so attacked for wanting to bring a charter. So I'm not on the board. I'm not advocating that this charter has to go at all costs. What I'm saying is we need to find a solution. And those of you that live in Rain Dance that did not want this, make sure that you pay attention to the school board because I know you don't want this. And so in closing, I think we have a, we're at a crossroads and I think we really, really need to think about how do we find the resolution and go forward. Because to get a bond issue passed, you have to have support. And if this isn't supported somewhere in our community, there's gonna be enough people that are angry that will not support a public bond issue. So let's put our thinking caps on, let's quit shinning hate back and forth on social media, and let's find the solution, and let's go build some schools.